Hey everyone, I'm Kristen the Cross Stitching Runner and welcome to my channel. Today is Saturday the 30th of April and I've, I haven't really been counting too much of what episode I'm up to. I think it might be episode 27. Um, anyway, I have done a fair bit of stitching. I've also done a fair bit of procrastination before I really kick in to this channel I want to say a big hello and welcome to uh, all new and returning subscribers and if by chance you've stumbled across this channel uh, this channel is all about cross stitch and a little bit of life stuff thrown into it and if you happen to like what you see in this episode make sure you, um, you hit that subscribe button um, and that little bell notification as well to make sure you receive um, notifications for when I next release um, a floss tube episode and um, yeah that like button definitely helps a lot as well so also before I really kick into um, to this particular episode and, and what's been going on I want to say a big thank you to, to everyone who's been um, commenting on this channel and it's made a really big difference to, to really get the, the channel out there to have it start popping up a bit more in um, people's uh, YouTube feeds and, and that kind of thing. Um, I've definitely noticed like a, I guess over the last couple of weeks, a significant increase in the number of views that have been, been happening. And um, I, I do appreciate that at the moment, um, hopefully a lot of people are on holidays at the moment or or have been on holidays because of Easter and um, other types of holidays that are happening around the world. So um, hopefully hopefully the, the numbers that I'm seeing with um, the views and all the rest still, still keep happening. And um, thank you. Thank you so much. And... Uh, I guess I, I do want to, to acknowledge especially the, the comments um, with regards to the, the things that, I guess the things that motivate you as a stitcher for, for why you you choose to stitch the things that you do or or keep, what keeps you going um, to, to continue to, to work on those projects. And I can definitely relate to, to everyone who has uh, chosen to share um, what motivates them by the the comments and and thank you um, because I, I can definitely relate to the emotional side of, of stitching and just really being drawn to um, to projects because um, you felt a connection with um, maybe the person who has designed the project or um, the the particular reason for why stitch along might be happening or, or something very similar and um, I am very much motivated connected to um, certain projects especially to do with the, the colors that, that are in a, a project and I guess um, yeah trying to join a few different things and uh, try a few different challenges so um, yeah, th thank you all so much um, for your comments. Thank you. I, I really do appreciate it. Okay, so let's kick into to the stitching and everything that's been going on. And I think I decided that I'll try something just a little bit different here where I've seen on some of the other Floss Tube channels where some people talk a little bit about their best new things. And for me, uh, today, earlier this morning, I went to the hairdresser. So I've got it, my hair's just a little bit darker. It's got some uh, freshened up colour in it. Um, so it's got it's got a bit more purple in it and all. So I don't know if the lighting and the, the camera is picking up on, on that much. But one of the things that I really loved about the, the hair appointment that I had today was when the, the colour was getting washed out and it's getting shampooed and, and that kind of thing, getting a treatment put into it, the lady who was um, putting the, the treatment into the hair and that, she gave me a really, really wonderful head massage. And that's one of the things, um, one of the many things that I really look forward to when I go to the hairdressers to get a head massage. And the way that she did the head massage today was just absolutely awesome because 
um, I guess, generally speaking, we hold on to, to tension in different parts of our body. And for me, some of that tension is sort of in that, that headspace, I guess, partly because of um, I'm an office worker, um, professionally speaking, and I do a lot of cross stitch as well. So I guess that headspace and, and the neck and the shoulders, it, a lot of the tension is connected there. So I just really, really appreciated that head massage uh, today. And um, I definitely had, had let her know that I really liked um, that head massage. And when I went to, to pay for the uh, appointment today and, and make a, a new one, I definitely let her, her boss know as well how much I really appreciated um, that head massage. And, and she was there when I was saying it to to a boss and um, just a little bit later like I knew she, she was a little bit embarrassed that that I'd been so so thankful and said look I know like I'm really sorry for, for embarrassing you a bit but it, to me it was important that that her boss knew um, just how much I appreciated it so aside from the head massage one of the other, one of the other things that has recently happened that I'm really really excited about is I'm going to be doing two trips up to um, to Queensland around the, the Brisbane Gold Coast area in the month of July. So uh, earlier, I think in the, the last Fosty episode, I had mentioned that I'm getting back into running again and that I'm going to be participating in the five kilometre fun run um, for the Gold Coast Airport 5k fun run. And so that's the, the first trip that, that I'll be doing up to Queensland. And the second one um, is a little bit unexpected, but it's something that I'm excited about, where my boyfriend uh, is a big supporter of the Aston Villa Football Club. Um, and the Aston Villa team um, are going to be travelling to Australia in July to play two, possibly three soccer matches Um here in Australia and one of those matches is going to be up at Brisbane and I I don't follow soccer too much but um, I know that it's really important for my boyfriend that um, that Aston Villa are coming to Australia because um, to the best of my understanding um, Aston Villa have not been to Australia before to play in any friendly matches or or anything like that and because I know that his um, just a really big supporter of the team and has been for for a long time that I'm excited for him as well and so we're going to go and watch that watch the the soccer game um, on the 17th of July and it's going to be exciting because I know that going to see a live event whether it be a sporting event a musical or some kind of music event a concert pardon me, sorry, I've had some coffee, um, or whatever it might be, it's that atmosphere that can really add to, to the experience. So that's part of why I'm just really excited about going up there. And hey, it's holiday, come on. Um, heading up to Queensland around July is a beautiful time of year because in Australia, it's winter time and in Canberra, it's like the middle of our winter here, and it's going to be cold. And um, heading up to Queensland around that time of year, it's it's almost like autumn weather for for many other areas of the the country. It's it's a comfortable temperature where it might still get a little bit cool at night, and there might be the odd cool day, but the the top temperatures are comfortable. Um, I'm not sure what the temperatures would be in Fahrenheit, but at least in degrees Celsius, um, it'll be around the 20, 25 degree mark and it'll be nice, it'll be comfortable. So so those are the two things that I'm just really excited about in terms of the, the trips up to Queensland. The next thing that I've really done um, and that I'm really excited about since we last caught up is I'm starting to do just a bit of a deep dive into family history. So this is a bit connected to a 
a potential stitch with me that I'll do um, in November where in November on the 11th day of the 11th month here in Australia we celebrate Remembrance Day so it's the the acknowledgement of remembering um, I think it was the end of World War One and I feel like I'm I'm poor on my history at the moment or I'll need to double check but Remembrance Day is is very much connected to commemorating the the people who um, who have served um, with um, I guess World War One but also very much so I guess broadening it out a little bit um, who have participated in all conflicts so I'm just doing a bit of a, a bit of a deep dive bit of a, a family history um, dive to um, see what I can have come out of it um, developing just a little bit of a storyline that I want to use um, for the November stitch with me and it's it's been pretty cool so far um, I've I've only I'm just skimming the surfaces a little bit at the moment and I do want to, to dive a little bit more in just to confirm a few more details and flesh it out a little bit using just some artistic and, and creative licenses. Um, so here's hoping. Um, it, it's, it's got me all excited because aside from my professional job of being involved in records management and, and information management, it's a historical factor that the, the records, whether it be the documents, photographs, sound recordings, these videos that we do and anything in between, over time we're creating history and uh, depending on what kind of questions we ask and, and what we're wanting to find out, these kinds of recordings and documents and such and the, the stitching that we're doing can all add to it. So that's what gets me excited, that that's what has 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 me passionate about that kind of thing. So the next thing that has got me just quite interested um, at the moment, um, it actually has a bit to do with the procrastination that happened to me last weekend, is on Netflix here in Australia, in Australia at least, I've really gotten into watching um, the, the Netflix series called The Home Edit. So um, I guess it's for, for anyone who hasn't watched the home edit um, I know if you do like Instagram searches and that kind of thing um, there's a lot of stuff on, on there connected to the, the home edit and so they're all about sort of helping people um, just just clean up different rooms of their houses and and all the rest based upon the requests that um, famous people and people like you and I who have put a request into the home edit and say, hey, ladies, I need your help to clean up a particular room. And I know that like the room, a little bit of the room that you see here, this is the room that I'm trying to clean up a little bit. And this is my microphone. It's my office and um, craft room. And it had also for a little while had been um, my study room as well when um, when I was studying at uni and it had initially been intended to be a spare bedroom. So th th this room has had a few different hats so to speak and as time has gone on I've rearranged furniture and that kind of thing and it's at the stage where I need to purge quite a lot of stuff just to get it into a, a new new era of how I want to use the space so that that's where I've really gotten into watching the home edit to, to try and get a few more ideas that can help me like visualize a bit more of how I want to see the space so so there are a lot of the things that I've really been into over the last fortnight and hopefully I can stick with it hopefully I can can get this room cleaned up I hope I can stick with running plans and I really hope things can keep going forward with the deep dive I'm doing into family history and the deep dives that I'm doing for um, getting ready for running getting ready for um, yeah, a lot of stuff 
so it'll be all good. Now let's get into the stitching. Okay, so let's get into the stitching. Now I can't quite remember if I had talked too much about the total scores and stitching that I needed to do for round five. So if by chance I have, um, thank you for bearing with me. And if by chance I haven't, then hey, I'm doing all good. So what I've done for, for this particular episode for, for the stitching is I've noted down as to what the total um, amounts of stitching that I've had to do for the projects I'm about to share with you um, for, I guess, round five and round six of the AFL um, footy fixture thing. If by chance you haven't um, watched some of my earlier episodes and you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, what I'm doing is I'm setting myself a bit of a challenge for this year to, to work on some of the whips and new starts if I feel I need to, to, to do a new start, um, is using, I guess, the, the March, or March, sorry, uh, March Madness kind of, um, uh, I've got the word fixture on my brain, um, that's not what I'm after, it's the bracket system um, that's connected to the Steel City st Stitches. Um, that they've developed over the last few years uh, to help with getting some of their smaller pieces done with the aim of getting one um, at least um, fully finished as far as the stitching is concerned and then fully fully finished in terms of it finished stitching and then made into to whatever they've wanted to, to make with it. So what I'm doing is using the Australian Football League or the, the AFL um, footy fixture for this calendar year um, and I'm using that as my form of a bracket system and what I've done is attributed um, some of my works in progress uh, to the teams the, or the 18 teams that make up the footy fixture and in some situations some of my projects um, or using Fight Like a Girl as an example. Um, Fight Like a Girl, for example, I've got connected to about three, two or three different um, teams because of the different prompts that I'm choosing to use for those teams. So I'm using two key uh, prompts um, to justify why I'm working on a particular project so the prompt might be um, the team colors that are associated with the footy team um, or their team mascot so for example um, in fight like a girl um, we'll see here that we've got um, a line in it from um, CS Lewis's the line the witch and the wardrobe and there's a team in the AFL fixture called the Brisbane Lions. So that's why I've chosen um, this project to go with the Brisbane Lions. And as, as I start talking a bit about some of the projects I'm working on, it'll start to make a bit more sense. So what I've, what I've been doing in the last few rounds is I have just taken the winning final score from each game from each round to then um, say, okay, well, I'm going to put 117 stitches into Fight Like a Girl because Brisbane Lions won their game and their final score was 117 points. So that's my line of thinking of how I'm doing with this fixture. And it's taken me a few rounds to get there to actually figure out what's going to work for me. And with the AFL fixture, um, it started on March 16th um, and it's going to finish very early November. Um, I'm not sure on the exact date for when the grand final is going to be. So it'll be interesting to, to see how things go. So let's let's get into it <laughs> because I'm going to get myself tongue-tied if I really start start getting muddled and, and talking too much about 
how I'm doing all of this. So with Fight Like a Girl, um, in round five, the, the teams that were connected to, to this particular project, I've added up the, the scores connected to them. And if I can remember when I'm doing the editing of this, I'll have also um, a, a snippet of the spreadsheet that I'm using to keep track of um, the scores, the stitches, projects, and, and all of that fun stuff. Um, so in round five, I had to do a total of 312 stitches in Fight Like a Girl. And for round six, I needed to do a total of 208. So over the last two weeks, I have put uh, about 520 stitches into this project. And um, I know that I'm using that as the bare minimum in some cases for the amount of stitching that I'm putting into some of these projects because there will be times where I really get into the flow of working on the project and um, I'll probably end up doing more stitching than what I at least theoretically or technically need to do. So this is my project uh, or my progress on Fight Like a Girl so far. I'm just going to stand back just a little bit. I'm getting a bit better with being able to, to manage this fabric because this where, where you see my fingers, this is how wide the project is going to be when it's finished. So the good thing is that I have been able to trim down the width of the fabric and my next challenge is going to be um, trimming up the length and, and I'll get there. Um, I, I might, I'm toying with the idea of using one of the fabric calculators to, to measure it out because um, I'm just getting a bit over how much fabric I'm, I've got with it. To put it into perspective, um, I'm stitching this on 18 count navy blue later. And okay, so this is how long um, the, the fabric is. And yeah, considering how much um, I've stitched so far, I know that the project isn't going to be that long. And the great thing is I've already got a couple of projects lined up that, or at least, at least one project lined up that would look fantastic on this fabric. So that's part of why I'm keen to get it fixed. Hang on. Okay, so um, I have focused mostly on the purple, uh, this purple spine of the book that you might see I guess that's, if I get the fingering right, the this section here. Um, and I've also got a bit more of the stitching done along here just to confirm the width because I really wanted to try and um, trim down some of the fabric. So this is all on DMC threads. Um, it's two threads over one fabric square and it's a combination of full crosses and half stitch also known as tenth stitch um, and that's that's what the, pat, um, the pattern calls for as well and um, what I'm extra excited about with this particular pattern is that um, it is finally um, pattern keeper compatible um, initially when I bought the pattern a few years ago it wasn't and um, now it is and I've been able to I guess install it or upload it into into Pattern Keeper and it has been a game changer for me working on Fight Like a Girl to, to really be able to keep track of um, my progress with it and um, the stitching that, that I need to do on it. Um, so yeah, so that's been really cool. And so I've got my notes in front of me just to double check where I'm at. Okay, so the next project is 12 Days of Christmas. So 12 Days of Christmas, I started it a couple of years ago. Um, I think it might have been either tw back in 2019 around September or it could have been little bit later I've got the number 2019 in my head 
and I think that's when I last really got into wanting to stitch a lot of Christmas related stuff. So 12 Days of Christmas is out of the Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas magazine. Um, it is volume 19 from the year 2018 and the I guess the pattern is designed by Rona Nori and this is what it will look like using all of the the called for fabric flosses and and all the rest and it recommends that the fabric is 24 count navy even weave um, that's the recommendation um, I at the time didn't have the 24 count navy even weave I had this fabric instead and so I decided to start in the middle and this particular project I have attributed to the AFL teams uh, called the Sydney Swans which is the team that my boyfriend and I support and I also have um, the West Coast Eagles because I needed to stitch something that has birds in it uh, I also have the AFL team called the St Kilda Saints connected to this project because um, I guess the name alone is a hint at what their, their mascot is so St Kilda is a suburb of Melbourne and my, my logic for this particular project is the Saints are connected to religion this particular piece, because it's Christmas, is a religious -y, religious kind of... Uh, it's connected to religion, because it's Christmas. Um, so, in round five, I needed to put 208 stitches into this project. And for round six, I needed to put 186 stitches in it. So... This project is seeing roughly 394 stitches and I, what I actually um, have just recently come across a really cool tip that I hadn't even thought to do because with one of the Facebook groups that I'm part of, um, I can't remember which group it is at the moment, um, one of the, the people shared a trick that they're using for keeping track of um, where they're at on um, a colour uh, physical pattern. So what they've done is they've got um, a post-it note um, and they've got the post-it note will sit under the, the line on the pattern for where they're stitching. And pardon me, to me that was a really cool tip. I, I love it. So. I'm going to need to try and do that for 12 days of Christmas because um, when I first started this project I had um, photocopied the pattern and I've lost the, the the photocopy of the pattern so I've just been working on the color pattern in the book and um, I in in terms of though that sort of pattern because it's in a book because it's color I am not touching it. I am not marking it off in any way. I'm just uh, using using sight to gauge just to where I'm at, and it's a bit hit and miss because um, with the the goose in the middle, um, I have mucked up with my counting for the goose in the middle for his beak. So let's see if I can bring this in a little bit. Okay, so with the goose. Um, let's see if I need, I need to fold this in a little bit. So the goose in the middle, he is one stitch too short as far as his neck is concerned. And as a result of his neck being just a little bit too short, where his beak is going to be, let's see if I can get this right. So with the goose in the middle, his beak is going to be, he's going to be poking the goose in front of him in the back of the head. Um, so I am going to have to do a bit of frogging, um, to try and fix things up a little bit and, um, 
yeah, because that kind of mistake in terms of that one stitch being out, it's going to have an impact for the rest of the, rest of the stitching above the goose. So to put it into perspective, um, okay, so I don't know if the camera will focus very well on this. So you, you might be able to see just a little bit that the... The, the beak here needs to be just a little bit above. Anyway, <laughs> it'll be okay. I'll get there. I'll figure it out. Um, okay, so the next project, I've actually only, it's been a bit hit and miss for when I've been able to stitch on this next project. So this particular project, um, I've nicknamed Pisces. It is a project that uh, is a combination of a picture that I found on like a um, Pinterest or something like that. And the, the quote was also connected to, to Pinterest as well as part of some scrolling that I was doing. And so this particular project is connected to a team called Port Adelaide because their team colours are teal, silver and black. And this particular project, it's designed to have a lot of um, this teal kind of colour. And the, the quote by memory is Pisces. Uh, not everyone will get the same version of me. Uh, some will tell you that I'm a sweetheart some will tell you I am a B. Um, oh, some will tell you I'm a beautiful soul. Um, others will tell you that um, I'm a cold-hearted B. Um, I act accordingly. So something, something very similar to that wording. I'll put a cover, the cover page thing in um, on the screen. And I, for me, it's also the colours of the fish, of the, the Pisces symbol and the, the fish in it. Um, that's what drew me to to that particular um, picture and that even though it's kind of my design I I'm not sure about the whole copyright side of things for how that's going to work so that that's yeah it's going to be interesting so um, I needed to put um, 117 stitches into this particular project uh, just for round six because Port Adelaide they're not doing very well in the football this year uh, they've won one game uh, that I'm aware of and in that game in round six last week they had won they they scored 117 points so I'm stitching this on I think it's 28 count linen or even weave uh, I can't really tell the difference between linen and even weave um, when it's good quality fabric. Um, so it at the moment I'm stitching this two over two using the DMC colours and um, when I get to the point when I get to the point of stitching the fish, I'm probably going to do two over one or one over one because of my really really poor fabric measurements and all the rest so we'll get there i've talked a little bit about how how wonderful i am with um my fabric measurements and it'll be okay um so the next project that i've been with uh, that i actually still need to do a bit of work on because i haven't actually done the stitching yet on this one for round six and where I guess in the middle of round seven right now. So um, this next one that I'm, I'm working on is the black and white rolled up daisy. It's my design and it's available for purchase on the Hot Cross Stitching website. And this is a photo that I've converted into um, a cross stitch pattern. And this particular project I've attributed to um, two teams. Um, the Collingwood Magpies because their their team colours are black and white and in terms of the bird called the magpie here in Australia is a black and white bird 
And the other team that I've connected to this project is the Adelaide Crows. And here in Australia, the crow is a completely black bird. So that's where um, I'm stitching this particular project on 14, no, 18 count black ada. And so this is where I'm up to at the moment. And I know that with the background for this particular project, it's it's quite mottled it's not great um i am th this is the model project picture thing for the the flower and i do like how um the the fabric or not the fabric the the flower is starting to turn out so to help put into perspective um also i'm definitely recommending that if you're wanting to stitch this particular project that you could choose to actually um, not stitch the background and I do need to do a bit of work on the pattern to actually release the pattern so it doesn't have the background. So um, so you would just see the flower here um, and it wouldn't have the, the background. Um, so just as the comparison, I don't know how this is going to gonna go. Okay. So this is, I guess, just a bit of an example. And it's, I'm sorry for it being crooked right now for how I'm holding this up. There we go. I'm standing your toes. So yeah, it's getting there. I'm, I'm, this is actually one of the, the projects where I'm barracking for the teens to win because I want to work on these sorts of projects. And with Collingwood and the Adelaide Crows, they're, they're doing okay um so in total uh for, for round five i put 101 stitches into this project and i still need to put another 100 186 into this and the thing that i really really love with this project is that it is fully pattern keeper compatible i'm using I'm actively using Pattern Keeper to, to work on this particular project. And um, to, to me, Pattern Keeper, if, if anyone here who is watching and you're stitching a full coverage project or you're considering stitching a full coverage project, um, I highly, highly recommend you get onto, on, onto Pattern Keeper. It is a an Android only device using kind of app right now um, and also I'm not affiliated with Pattern Keeper in any way I, I just love the app <laughs> I really really love it because um, it's just just making life so much easier um, and that's what my aim is with all of my my designs um, is to, to make them Pattern Keeper compatible especially the full coverage ones um, because it, uh, it, if I'm going to be stitching these projects, I want to make like my life easier. And if anyone here is going to be purchasing those projects, I want you guys to have an easy time stitching these projects as well. And uh, if it means using Pattern Keeper um, to make that job easier, then then we definitely need to go down that path. And um, I guess over time, um, the aim will be to try and um, make the, the patterns compatible with some of the other um, types of apps as well. Um, the challenge is that I don't typically use um, an iOS kind of device, so um, that, that is the, the challenge of trying to, to make it work, but also the, um, the aim with the PDFs, as long as the PDFs can work with any of those sorts of um, similar apps, then hey, if it works with Pattern Keeper and it's a PDF kind of um, kind of pattern, then in, in theory at least it should work with um, pardon me, those sorts of um, apps as well. Okay, so where am I at? I am at Dewdrop Daisy. I love I love this project. Um, I've, I've really, it took me a while to fall in love with this project, but the more and more 
I've been stitching on it, the more I've fallen in love with it. Um, and I think what has also helped as well is that um, my boyfriend has been um, a huge supporter of me getting getting work done, done on this project. Um, I guess <laughs> partly because he, he and I have this, this running joke where I have a lot of projects and I do get, get some of my projects done in terms of the smaller ones, but I am yet to um, finish one of my full coverage projects, especially one of my own designs. So this is Dewdrop Daisy. Um, so it's available on the Hot Cross Stitching website uh, for sale. Uh, it is fully Pattern Keeper compatible and I'm using, I'm actively using Pattern Keeper for this one as well to, to get it done. And this particular project I have attributed to um, the AFL football team called the Fremantle Dockers. Their main team colour is purple and you'll soon see that with this project I'm stitching it on purple fabric and um, especially for the centre of the flower you'll see that it's got some, some purple colours in it and with Dewdrop Daisy um, this is actually a double project in the sense that I have it connected to another challenge that is a year long or for me it's a year long project or a year long challenge um, where in the full coverage fanatics Facebook group um, I am aiming to put 22,000 stitches into this project for the year 2022 okay so just take a, step, a few steps back This is where I'm at. How awesome does it look? So I think the fact that I'm the fact that I'm stepping back a bit, you can actually just see just how cool it looks. And I'm stitching this two over two. So two DMC threads over two fabric squares. And I think this might be 28 count linen and I have made the mistake of, of stitching it over two, uh, over two fabric squares because I'm going to run out of space. Um, okay, so to help put into perspective, um, the, uh, in terms of the actual stitching space, yes, I'll run out. I'm going, it's going to be okay. Um, so I have put a minimum of 204 stitches into this. Um, so just based on the AFL fixtures so far, um, the Fremantle Dockers won their game in round five and they scored a total of 107 points. And then in round six, they scored a total of 97. So, I still need to put some more work into into this project to to really get it closer to the my weekly average that I need to do for um for the twenty two thousand stitches. So it's it's four crosses, and I'm definitely I'm focusing towards the um where am I? <laughs> there we are. So I'm focusing towards the I guess um. The petals where we see some of the darker colors and just trying to move it down towards the bottom corner of it and yeah it's really really coming together um i'm loving it i really am and i think in total there's meant to be i think six just under 60 and a half thousand stitches which i guess comparatively um it's a small full coverage project or medium sized full coverage project. When we start looking at the full coverage projects like Heaven and Earth Designs, where they've just got such beautiful detail um, in those projects and um, we're talking like hundreds of thousands of stitches that go into a lot of those projects. So to me, 
60,000 or 60 and a half thousand stitches isn't isn't too much it's, it's going to be okay it will take a few years to get done and I fully accept that because for me it's about the journey um, of of the stitching and actually while I think of it this project um, I, I guess we could say this project specifically but we could also say stitching generally my couch is jealous <laughs> um, which explains the name of this floss tube episode so the part of the couch that I sit on quite a lot for my stitching um, the couch to date and I have been able to retrieve some of these things the couch to date has eaten my scissors a few times I can't I can't remember how many times uh, it has eaten a few pencils a few colored pencils uh, it's eaten uh, my needle winders a few times um, one half of a needle winder I can't get back uh, partly because of its shape partly because of its color it's in there somewhere and the latest thing my couch has done it has eaten mm, three quarters of a skein of floss so I've lost a bobbin for this project a bobbin of floss in the couch somewhere and I don't know where on the couch it is it's a recliner kind of couch and I have had bruises on the back of my hands and everything from when I've gone deep diving and trying to get my hands into the nooks and crannies of the couch to, to get out the um, the different things my couch has eaten over time um, and as long as some of the stuff that I've lost doesn't interfere with the mechanics of the couch and how it moves it'll be all right because I trust that I'll eventually find the stuff that I've lost that I, I can't get back um, so with the, the skein of floss that I have temporarily lost I think at the back of the couch uh, I'm gonna have to buy another skein to actually help with completing this project because I'll eventually get to the stage where I just can't complete it without that color um, so to date I can't remember how much stitches I've done so far I'm probably sitting around I think it's either f somewhere between 41 and 47 percent of the project um, I'll have to have to take a closer look at pattern keeper to, to double check on that one okay so the last project I have um, for this particular fortnight is barnyard cat so this is a dimensions kit and I started this at a roughly in 2019 and I'm using all of the cord four colors and all of the cord four fabric and that kind of thing and I am attributing this particular project to the Geelong cats so Geelong um, their team colors are blue and white so theoretically I could use fight like a girl as um, the piece for the um, for the Geelong cats because I'm stitching it on blue fabric but I'm already putting so many stitches into fight like a girl because of the other teams that are connected to um, to that project that's like I need a break from fight like a girl every so often so this is where I've gotten to with um, barnyard cats and just in round six, um, the Geelong Cats won their game and so I put 121 stitches into this. I have actually put more than 121 stitches into it, at least over the, the last fortnight. And I have focused on, I guess, the Ginger Cat where we see, see its legs starting to form a bit more. And um, yeah, I'm actually... I'm enjoying this project so it is one of the projects that I I do hope that Geelong win 
as long as they're not playing against the Sydney Swans, it'll be all right. As much as I don't want to put a bucket load of stitching into 12 days of Christmas, because with 12 days of Christmas, it's one of those projects that has fractional stitches in it. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it is one where I need to start using like a, a post node or, or something along those lines to actually keep track of where I'm at in the pattern. But um, yeah, I'll get there. It'll be all right. So I'm just double checking my notes and I think it's all good. I think, I think we're pretty well up to date. So we're in the middle of round seven with the AFL right now and last night which was Friday night um, the first game for round seven was played and it was the Richmond Tigers versus versus someone I can't remember the name of the team just yet as to which team it was I do know that uh, the Richmond Tigers won their game and it is also a team that my nan um, supports. So, um, and I think by memory, uh, I know a few other people who, who support the Richmond Tigers as well. So um, the significance of that particular game was that um, in terms of the win that they did, or the one that, the win that they had, <laughs> um, was that uh, they won by 119 points. So I believe the final score was 165 points to 50, 50 or so points. So that was the significance of that particular game and why it stuck in my head a bit in terms of those details. So the good thing is that I get to put a minimum of 165 stitches on a project that you'll see in a couple of weeks called um, Water Tiger 2. Um, if you go back and have a look at some of my previous um, Floss Tube episodes, you'll, you'll see um, the progress I've made on that project to date. And it's also a project that I'm wanting to try and get done by roughly roughly this time next year because in October um, my best mate is going to be turning 40 and she loves tigers um, she a few quite a few years ago now uh, she worked on a project called the blue eye tiger and I strongly recommend you do like a, a google search or some kind of search to bring up the blue eyed tiger cross stitch project because um, or, or if you're working on it then you know exactly what I'm talking about where it is a stunning project it, it, it is a stunning picture and the special thing with that project um, especially when uh, when it's connected to my best mate is that um, for anyone who has known her for a long time She's a very active person, um, especially in her teenage years. It was hard to try and get her to sit down, sit, sit down and sit still. Um, so there, there, were, there were quite a few reasons for why that was. She has mellowed out a little bit with age. Um, and as a result, um, when people found out that she does cross stitch and especially when she was showing people the project she was working on and um, the progress that she was making with it, they were in absolute shock because if you have someone in your life or, or you might be that active person um, who is full of beans, full of energy and then to, to sit down calmly and do cross stitch, it is, it is a very surprising thing if people don't know you very well or you don't know that particular person very well and the blue eye tiger is a full coverage project and it looks stunning so that's the the importance to me for for the blue not the blue eye tiger a little bit for the blue eye tiger but the importance to me for getting 
water tiger to done okay so that that's about it that i have to share with all of you today and i also want to acknowledge that i haven't done a stitch with me for the month of april and um that's largely to do with uh, me not being organized really uh because i i didn't really know what project i wanted to work on and I, as a result of not really knowing what project to work on for this month um i didn't really know what i wanted to talk about as a result um so that's where um I'll, I'll be doing a little bit more planning and i do have some ideas for the month of may in terms of a stitch with me that i may do so if if all goes well you'll see one posted in may i have i am finding that the stitch with me's aren't as popular as the um the regular floss tube episode so that's where i guess I'm, I'm not too heartbroken that i haven't done um a stitch with me for april as well so uh hopefully i can stick with it hopefully i can just see the month of april as just a bit of a hiccup in terms of uh, being consistent with what i want to do and what i'm trying to do and we'll go from there it'll be okay but until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful fortnight and um, I hope you're able to, to get as much, as much stitching done as you, you can comfortably do. Um, and I'll see you next time. See you.